Hello students. In this video, uh, we're going to solve the homogeneous wave equation. The solution to this equation will be a standing wave. And in a subsequent video, I will demonstrate that the solution is indeed uh, what we call a standing wave. So you could think of a like a guitar string, for example. When you pluck it, it'll oscillate up and down. Um, that'll be the sol uh, solution for the physical interpretation of the solution to this wave equation. All right, so here's our PDE up at the top and the boundary conditions. And notice we have two initial conditions. We're gonna need these two initial conditions um, because we have two time derivatives. Here we go. We're gonna use separation of variables. So I'm going to formally proceed and assume I can write my solution as a product of two functions. Uh, this function x is uh, completely, uh, capital X is completely a function of X. There's no T's or anything else in there. And this function, capital T, is solely a function of little t. So I substitute this uh, uh, ansatz, or form of the solution, into the PDE, and um, the following takes place. Take two derivatives with respect to X, two derivatives with respect to T. To distinguish between those derivatives, I'll use the Double, I'll use the dot notation for the derivative with respect to t. So I get two dots in this equation, and I get two primes for the spatial derivative on the right-hand side. Then I proceed with separation of variables, and I get this equation here by doing some algebra. Now notice I'm making the assumption that u is not 0, um, and then that'll imply that by the factor theorem that x can't be 0 and t can't be 0. Uh, and when I say X, I mean capital X and capital T. Uh, when I refer to X and T in this case, I'll um, just assume I'm talking about capital X and capital T. Uh, so now, um, since uh, capital X and capital T cannot be zero, I'm just going to divide by them. But notice I have um, change with respect to T is equal to a change with respect to X. So I have a function that's totally, uh, solely, a function of t equal to a function that's solely a function of x. So that has to be a constant. And we call that constant the separation constant. And so um, I have to consider the cases where the separation constant is 0 or the separation constant is greater than 0. And then I will consider the case where the separation constant is less than 0. But let me cover these two cases first. If the separation constant is 0, then I get t double primed is equal to 0. And I get that t is equal to, you know, some line, a t plus b, for example, where a and b are some scalars. And uh, if I take the limit as t goes to infinity, then this clearly is going to go to infinity, so my solution would blow up. Um, that clearly can't be a solution to this PDE because um, it wouldn't satisfy the boundary conditions, for example. So um, this uh, case, this can't be the case where mu is equal to zero. <laughs> Uh, likewise, if I, um, oh, and by the way, t goes to positive infinity. Remember that one of the assumptions here is that t is greater than zero. We're interpreting t to be something like little t to be something like time. Now, uh, when mu is greater than zero, uh, then I set up the characteristic equation for this ODE, and I push the mu um, a squared over to the other side. I take square roots, I get plus or minus. And anyhow, I get um, this uh, sum of uh, real exponentials. And again, this term is going to blow up uh, as t goes to positive infinity. This term will decay to zero, but this term is going to go to infinity. So once again, we have the case where when mu is greater than zero, capital T goes to infinity. So we proceed for the case where mu is going to be less than zero. So let's set mu equal to minus lambda squared, and then we guarantee that it's less than zero. And if I do that, I get the following two ODEs. So I solve these ODEs, and uh, of course I get a, um, the following uh, solutions. I'm assuming that you know how to solve these ODEs um, if you're in a PDE class. And then um, now I'm going to focus on the X equation, and I'm going to solve the boundary conditions. So um, if X of 0 is equal to 0, that's from this left boundary condition, then um, the cosine of 0 is 1, so that leaves only C4 sine, um, I'm sorry, C4 sine of 0 is 0, and the cosine of 0 is 1, so that leaves C3, 
And so that implies that C3 is equal to zero. So that leaves us with X is equal to C4 sine lambda X. And then if I plug in the L for the other boundary condition, then I get X of L is equal to um, C4 sine of pi L. And uh, since I don't want, uh, I'm gonna assume lambda is greater than zero. Again, I have to because um, otherwise then I would be back to this mu equals zero case then I have to have that lambda L is equal to multiples of pi because I don't want U to be equal to zero. So C4 is clearly not gonna be zero as well. And then um, if I solve for lambda, I get N pi over L. So I have the lambdas now. So now I know what the separation constant is and these are called the eigenvalues for the eigenfunction expansion. All right, so um, now I'm gonna impose this initial condition here, the derivative initial condition, and uh, I'm going to get that C2 is equal to zero. If you work that out, you take the derivative, the A lambda pops out, so then I get a minus sine A lambda T. Here, if I take the derivative of sine, the A lambda pops out, so I just factored it out here, and I would get a cosine, and then I plug in T prime, or T dot zero, and that would make this C2 times one, and this would be C1 times zero, so I'm left with the C2, so the C2 is equal to zero, and then that leaves me with T of T is equal to C1 cosine A lambda T. So now I combine these two, so I take this T of T and I multiply it by this X of X, which is, um, le uh, which is now sine of N pi over L X, because remember only C4 um, survived and lambda was equal to N pi, and then I take this lambda equals n pi and I put it into this function as well. So that's how I get this term here. So now I have a product of this cosine of n pi a t. And I have this um, c4 sine of n pi, at, n pi over l x. I multiply those two. And then the c4 times the c1, those are going to be some new constant. And then I am going to have these uh, solutions for um, every n where n will go from uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to infinity. And uh, so then I sum these into a, uh, a Fourier series, uh, where bn is equal to uh, this integral. Now the 2 comes from the fact that um, we are, instead of going from minus l to l, we're going from 0 to l, so we're doubling that integral. And the L comes from the orthogonality conditions, which um, I'll just recap. We impose this initial condition here, and then we're left with a um, cosine of zero is one, so we're left with this sine series. And then I multiply both sides by sines, and then this is equal to this um, and, and I integrate term by term. I'm assuming that this converges so that that integration is legal and I'm left with um, this integral is equal to L uh, for n is equal to m and it's going to be zero when n is not equal to m and so that's how I get L and then I have L times bm. I divide by L and I get 2 over L. So that's how you get that term. I cover um, the orthogonality conditions in a different video called Fourier series the long way. Um, I will uh, leave a link for that um, below this video. Okay, uh, so this is the solution to the um, wave equation. And uh, in a subsequent video, I'll show that this is a standing wave solution. All right, good luck.